In this tutorial, we'll take a look at some of the more common modeling and editing techniques that I use within the game engine. Because I model differently within the game engine versus when I'm working with cycles. They both have their advantages, but in the game engine, you're optimizing for speeds, you're keeping your polygon count down low. And also, so I'll just show you from starters, maybe I want a kind of a curved shaped car vehicle of some sort. And you would think, well, maybe starting from a cube isn't really ideal, but in a lot of cases it is. And the reason being is if I was, I was to come over here and put in a sphere into the scene. And I'll just take a look at that sphere real close. And if I go into edit mode, I deselect those and I want to use edge select. So if I hold down, let's see, I'm in edge select mode. So I hold down the alt key and I collect click that that's okay but you see I don't have an edge loop that goes all the way around it stops up there at that point it gets knocked out by that vertex so it's kind of this convergence is kind of goofy it goes okay if you go to the right like this and then it goes all the way around so to avoid it generally I don't use spheres I start with cubes so cubes are a lot easier so maybe in some of the things you can do is I'll start here by going to the modifiers and I'll get a multi-resolution modifier. Now, I've done a tutorial on this where the value of this is you can have different levels of resolution available so you can edit at different levels of detail but you can also just use it for subdivision like I'll do here. I'll just subdivide it twice and then I'll apply it. Okay now I have a new object and the great thing about this is that I can now go into edit mode and then if I shift alt I get this or shift this way it doesn't quite get it to this point but I can continue around and get it get this loop by holding shift alt like this but it just gives me cleaner surfaces for this type of modeling and maybe up here at the top now you notice one thing that I have set is I have this button set right here it's deselected. That way I can select both sides of the mesh if I want it. In fact I'll do just that in this case. I'll just take this top part and maybe I want to select all of those so I'll grab all these points like this and maybe I want to model with all those. Maybe I missed one there. Alright I'll get that one too. Alright but maybe this wants to be a flat surface on top instead of curved. And how do I flatten that? I can't just grab each individual vert vertex and flatten it easily. So you press S followed by Z because I want to flatten it on Z and then press 0 on the numpad. Whoops, hang on. I didn't left click. Alright, so you left click and there I go. I flattened that surface. That's a really powerful trick. I use that a lot. A couple other things is in here, maybe I'll come in and I'll select, I'll just shift select a few things that these guys cross the top. Oops, I missed that one down there. How'd I get that one? Hang on, I better try that again. This one, this one. Actually, this one thing you have to be worried about when you have CC through, you can actually pick things on the bottom side as well. So I have those, and maybe I want to adjust this because I want to have a something here, and I want to be able to pick up a different face. So I can press Shift V, and Shift V allows me to slide these along these like this. It's just great. I love that technique. Alright, so there repositions my faces differently. And so maybe I have these selected like this. And the other thing is, you might not be aware of, is the way you can select. Typically I select with the vertex or the edge or the face, but you can also just hold down the shift key and left click say this vertex at the same time. So now I'm able to select both. So I'll hold down the shift key now and I can also select vertices as well as edges like this. Oops, hang on. Got an edge, got a vertex. Got an edge, like that. So that's really helpful. Alright, and then of course, let me control a few of the control Z these out of here real quick. Yeah, there we go. So then, and then the other really great thing is, I'm sure most of you guys know this, but some people won't because sometimes it took me a long time for some of these to even discover them, you know, for a long time. So you never know what will help you. So in here, loop, cut, and slide is a great one. Control R. And so just by doing that, I'm not doing anything with the mouse yet, but I'm basically, what if I move the mouse around without touching the mouse button, it's going to change the orientation of this where I want to cut it. So in this case, maybe I want to cut that across. If I want to subdivide it more, before I left click, I'm going to move the wheel mouse button. I'm going to just subdivide like that and then le whoops, left click 
All right, and, or another way is you press A and you just control R again and you have this piece like this okay, so you maybe want maybe this one here and I'll left click but before I do anything I can actually move the mouse to a different point and then left click again alright so that was two left clicks to do it so that's a really great way to move that along alright and then the last thing for the game engine in particular this is really important I'll just try and grab these top edges here okay, so I'm going to delete those okay I'll get rid of that so this is okay so you're in whether you're in texture mode or solid mode it looks everything looks okay from this but when you go into game mode and actually run the game if I press P to start it it disappears because by default it's rendering just one side of the polygon and so the best way to deal with that is to be selective about what faces you don't always want to render everything double-sided you could just by pressing if I pressed shift D and immediately left click I've made a copy of that object right there and then if I go into edit mode and I press A to select all I come down to the mesh and I'll take the normals and I'll flip the normals around and then basically I have two copies so if I leave here now I should have two copies of that, two copies but one with the normals facing in and one with the normals facing out so if I run the game now I actually see everything right so you can verify what normals you have if you press N and then come down here and you can't see this unless you're in edit mode so I come into edit mode here and then I can press this normals button down here and then change the length so I can see it like that and you'll notice which one I'm looking at I'm looking at that inside copy that's the one that I flipped normal around on so if I leave edit mode and click this again which means now should be there's cube that's the original one versus cube notice if I click out here you can't get the inside cube because you have to you have to be able to click where the normals face to be able to select so I'm going to click on the inside to get that inside cube there on the outside I've clicked the outside cube I go into edit mode I'll press A down here I have to click normal again for each one and there's all the normals facing outward on that but typically what I do is I don't I won't work so much that way let me just get cube 01 hey, look that I was able to select that one that time not usually so here again it's gone when I run the engine but usually I do this selectively based on individual faces that I might want to turn inside out maybe I just want to turn that one and that one and that one and that one because that's sometimes all you need and then I'm always watching how many faces see there's four faces selected here out of 118 total so I'm constantly watching how many faces I'm creating for these to optimize for speed so in this case I'll press shift D and left click and then go down to the mesh and flip the normals and there those are facing inside like that and now you notice there's four more faces in the model 122 versus 118 so these things really come into play for all the work you do within the game engine okay well that's it for now and I'll see you in the next lesson.